fact, our guest this week, A.N. Wilson, is an author and historian. Nitin Sawney writes and performs music. James Whale is a radio presenter. And Alison Ruoff is a lay member of the Church of England Synod and a former magistrate. Welcome to the programme, all of you. Thank, thank you very you. much for being here this morning. Are you a criminal if you smoke cannabis? Not according to a group of MPs and peers this week. They say we should look again at selling drugs like marijuana, perhaps selling them in local chemists. A report by the Parliamentary Group for Drug Policy Reform also says some of those who are threatened with prosecution could use human rights laws to protect them. We'll hear from their co-chair, Baroness Meacher, in just a few moments. But it comes as last month police chiefs in Durham, Derbyshire, Dorset and Surrey suggested their officers had more important priorities than investigating small-scale cannabis growers. So if some politicians and the police are softening their stance on drugs, should we? That's our first question this week. Are we too hard on drugs? Alison, first, do you think it should remain a crime to yes, have Yes, I cannabis? do, most definitely. Uh, the damage that things like, which is the lower end of the scale, cannabis can do, uh, particularly to young people who are the main smokers, um, is, is very serious. Their mental health can suffer um, a lot. So the, half the problem with this is the police haven't got enough people to police the whole, the whole drugs um, scene. So I am totally opposed to uh, loosening it. I think it should continue as it is for the safety of everybody. Would you then jail everybody who takes no. it? Because you could be talking about two million people who take it regularly. Indeed. No, I wouldn't. Um, but I, but I, I think also the effect of, of medication um, for, for uh, medical problems uh, using cannabis is fine because it helps the pain enormously. So for medicinal reasons? I would be very happy with that, yes, but for no other reason at all. It also impacts upon other people's lives, the, any taking of drugs, family members, um, your, your work, ultimately, it'll just totally okay. destroy your life. Andrew, do you agree? It'll totally destroy your life. I mean, the, Almost there, certainly, there but I think the, possibly the best way of um, making the situation worse is to criminalise it. And that's why I'm a total libertarian, even though I agree with every word you say oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> about the dangers of taking drugs. And I certainly wouldn't wish to smoke something that's just been given to me. It might be relatively harmless marijuana. It might be skunk. I know five people who have been in effect sectioned and declared loonies for life because mm. of taking skunk. Because th there are chemicals in skunk which are much stronger and much target stronger. the brain's but, receptors uh, like but THC. if you wanted yes. to get some drugs now, and we're in the middle of London, if the place, the best place to buy them would be Wormwood Scrubs Prison. And criminalising um, drugs does not solve the problem. The prisons are full of drug addicts. Uh, people learn to move on from soft drugs to hard drugs in prison. So that um, I don't quite see the point of saying that it's a criminal offence if you're not going to do anything about it. I mean, the magistrate has just spoken and said she would keep it. Well, this magistrate criminal. is retired. I know, well, the retired magistrate. But I mean, you say <laughs> it, it's criminal. What's the point of saying it's criminal uh, if all you're going to do is find somebody who couldn't afford to pay the fine? Uh, what you should do, in my opinion, is regulate uh, much more strongly, as you do with cigarettes and alcohol, how this stuff is obtainable. And then if a young person comes and says they want to smoke some weed or something, you might say, fine, but you do realise it's very dangerous. <laughs> and uh, if you wanted something stronger, then I'm afraid you're going to have to go into right. rehab. OK. James, mm. what are your thoughts on this? Um, well, I, I think uh, I, 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 it's, it's difficult because I, I object to people smoking in the street. Um, but you can't, you know, prohibition doesn't work. So there's, there's no point. Prohibition doesn't work. They proved that with alcohol in America. You have to find another way exactly. of dealing with it. Mm. You can't actually say to somebody, otherwise, uh, driving cars fast kills lots of people, uh, smoking cigarettes kills lots of people, drinking alcohol kills lots of people. What are we going to do? Make it all illegal and the only things you can do are things that make... But who's going to decide what Well, what about do? these police forces then saying they're going to turn a blind eye to people who are smoking weed on the street or, or small we scale police, cannabis Yeah, growers? we police by consent in this country. And if the majority of the people in this country seem to want to do something that is currently illegal... What, let then, them do it? The, well, I don't say let them do it. We we don't let people smoke except over a certain age, and we don't let people drink except over a certain age. But 
prohibition doesn't work. The police can't keep a hand. Even if they had more police officers, you couldn't actually... If somebody wants to do something badly mm. enough, and enough people want to do it, then I think that the MPs and the All police right. chiefs who are saying that have probably... They're going to do it when they're, whether there are laws or not. Nitin, you work in the music business. Everybody seems to think that the music industry <laughs> is rife with drugs. I don't know whether it is or not. Well, I, I mean, my personal experience is I probably saw more uh, more drug taking at university than I ever did right. as a professional musician. But, but I think um, just coming back to to some of the points made, I think um, if you're talking about class A drugs, I get the uh, argument that you're the that that destroys communities. But so there, cocaine, yeah, heroin, yeah, exactly, those sorts of drugs. Whereas uh, cannabis well, and marijuana is a class B drug. Exactly. So I mean, the point is that, for example, Rastafarians think um, think that. Uh, uh, cannabis or marijuana actually is great for community building and and you know in the same way people go for social drinking but it's kind of um, it's about how much you take and 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 so on but I don't think you can actually really police people's um, mm. perspective on that. But there still have to be laws wouldn't there you wouldn't be allowed to to, to, to drive and be taking drugs. Yeah be, I think you know, so. People but that, do of course. Yeah. That, but that, 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 yeah. That's not what the all-party yeah. parliamentary group on drug policy reform is saying I know that I know they'd, they'd, they'd still want yeah, those sorts of, of laws in place. Let's talk to Baroness Meacher, who is the, the co chair of that group. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, one of the recommendations of your group is the regulated sale of marijuana. How would that work in practice? The, the, can I just say why we recommend that so strongly? Uh, if, I, if prohibition worked, I would support it. Our concern is the safety of young people. And uh, prohibition leads to uh, young people getting much, much stronger versions or variants of, of cannabis than they actually want. Most young people want a simple little spliff on a Saturday evening. They go to the drug dealers who don't care a pin about their safety, and the drug dealer says, oh, I haven't got any of that, but I have got something rather better, and they sell them skunk. And worse still, the second really real danger from prohibition is that young people who again want to spliff finish up being sold heroin or crack cocaine by the drug dealers. We have a supply gateway into the hard drugs. So we are not su suggesting s being soft on drugs, right. we're suggesting being smart. How it would work is that these drugs would be available, obviously for people over a certain age, we certainly suggest 18. They'd be really carefully labelled. The brain showing. is still developing after 18, right up until your mid-20s, though. And there is evidence, Royal College of Psychiatrists reported last year, suggesting it can cause problems in some vulnerable people. And whether you... Your s simple little spliff will still contain chemicals yes, which but, uh, seem to produce hallucinations, anxiety oh, and paranoia. But, well, th th frankly, that is scaremongering, if I may say From so. From the Royal if, College of Psychiatrists. Just a second, can I just say that if you label uh, drugs very, very carefully, ca cannabis, very, very carefully, making clear that anyone with a family history of psychosis should never take this drug, you'd have that on the, <laughs> on the package. The side effects, the risks, the age limit and so on. Yes, ideally one would have an age of 22. Very interestingly, mm -hmm. in, in Spain, where they have growing clubs, I, I met the president of those growing clubs and he said people should not take cannabis under the age of 22 was the age he put it at. The important thing in our, in, in our view, uh, well shared by many people, including many police officers, is that people need information, people need education, people need to understand. Young people don't want to damage themselves. Yes. The young people are perfectly sensible. If you give them the information, give them the, uh, the understanding of, of why they shouldn't do something, they're much less likely to do it. At the moment, it's just a bit of fun to go around the back streets and get a bit of something yeah. from a drug dealer. That is incredibly dangerous for young people. That's why we want change. Baroness Beecher, can I also raise this issue about the human right to a private and family? Life. The report also suggests those who buy, grow or use mm. drugs in small quantities can claim it's their human right yeah. to do so. What did you mean by that? Yeah, can I say that is actually a misquote? OK, <laughs> uh, shall I read... This was... I, no, this uh, was in no, support, I, no, no, I will read out the yeah. quote if it's a misquote. Yes. For European countries, the European Convention on Human Rights yeah. could be invoked in support yes. of the argument that possession or purchase yes. or cultivation yes. of drugs yes. for personal use, particularly yes. in small quantities, do not injure, injure other people's rights, either directly or indirectly. 
directly and therefore should not be that's criminalised. Right. And we make the, the point about it, that, that that's a little quote taken out of context. What we're talking about is governments that want to change the law need not be concerned about the uh, UN conventions on human rights because actually human rights trump the drug laws and, and uh, governments can justify uh, the, the decriminalization of possession and use. We're not talking about uh, an individual going off and, and telling their, <laughs> their police officer, look, you know, the European uh, court says that, I mean, if people want to take um, a, a case to the European uh, court, obviously I suppose that's up to them, but that's not honestly what we're about. We're about governments changing the law. Uh, and uh, our legal advisor, that quote comes direct from his legal advice, and that legal advisor made that point that actually European governments could uh, look to the European uh, Convention. Okay. So European governments could look to the Convention yeah. On, yeah. on Human Rights. Indeed. Thank you. James? Hmm. Oh, well, I think that's a very sensible way of looking at it. And I think uh, probably most people <laughs> in authority and lawmaking positions probably think that's a good idea as well. So who are the people who are against it? Because, as we've already said, the current regulations don't work. We have an enormous amount of criminality caused by drugs, and most of it because it's illegal. And uh, as, you, as you, you say, if you want to go and find drugs, one of the best places to find them okay. is in a prison. You Alice, can't even control it in prison. Alison, you heard what Baroness Mitchell yeah. was saying, and, and she was saying she's not being soft, that group is not being soft on drugs. It is being smarter on drugs. Well, that's what the Baroness says. I, I don't think it's smarter. I think to go to the idea of going to call this as your human right uh, from the um, convention is, is just bunk. Um, I just think we have to make sure we police this properly. We need more police officers. Um, and as for people growing their own supply, well, that will, that will increase, won't it? I've, I've seen pictures when I used to sit in court mm. of marvellous heating and lighting and a whole house had been turned upside down to grow their own okay. cannabis. Not for, not for it. It might start off for one person, but what happens then? You know, okay. uh, oh, I hear you grow cannabis. Let, let, let's, can, I, can I ask Baroness Meacher to respond to that point? directly that that actually if you do what you're suggesting then it will encourage further growth of cannabis mm. and there will be cannabis factories effectively well, there are now <laughs> well uh, i think the important important thing is to look at the evidence actually um, in spain they do have uh, cannabis growing clubs most of the members and they have to be members in order to get hold of the cannabis and to be involved most of them are actually sick people and I think, uh, was it Alison said, that for, for sick people, you really do need to make cannabis available. Mm. Others do use uh, the, the drugs, um, the, the cannabis, very sensibly. And, uh, and I, I went into this in some detail with them. The fact is, because they're in control, they know what they're getting. They know what they've got in their hand. They don't take too much. They don't take the dangerous cannabis. They don't take it if they've got a psychotic history. They're, they're in, a, in a group of people who understand what they're doing. Whereas what we've got here is a free-for-all uh, cannabis in the hands of drug dealers. It's incredibly right. dangerous for our young people. It is much safer actually in Spain. And then you've got Portugal where they've decriminalized the possession and use of all drugs. And what's happened is that young people, there's, there's a lower level of drug addiction amongst young people. And that is the issue that I am most concerned okay. about. We don't want addiction amongst children. Thank you for raising that point. We'll come back to our panel in a sec. I just want to hear your thoughts at home. And you've been sending a lot of them in, Tom. Yeah, there's been a lot. And a lot of people, Sean, saying actually that some of our panel comments are a little bit out of touch with what's actually going on. Uh, a lot of people saying that they're in favour of decriminalisation. Let's start with Zaid on Facebook. He says, uh, if a lifestyle habit like drugs increases pressure on shared resources, then I think it's not fair on the rest. So free treatments of these habits should be scrapped on the NHS. Tanwen saying decriminalising drugs would allow for public information sharing to help people make informed choices and help control drug taking. On Twitter, Harveer saying cannabis prohibition increases harm. The only way to reduce harm is to regulate the market for cannabis, a bit like what the Baroness was saying. Uh, Martin on Twitter saying we should have supervised legal drug clin clinics. Crime would fall as users won't need to steal to fund their habit and it would then be safer. And finally, Karen saying if people are taking drugs, uh, they will get it and they will get ill and uh, have more health issues. This would cost taxpayers more money to sort it out in the long run.
Thank you very much. Interesting points uh, there raised about treatment. In Sweden, the use and possession is illegal. and It's got one of the lowest drug use rates in Western Europe, but it does invest a lot in free and openly accessible treatment. Your thoughts, Andrew? Well, I think that's really the essential thing. I mean, I, I would want to add one further thing to the label which the Baroness is going to stick on to uh, legalised cannabis, namely, smoking this makes you very, very boring. And I've never, <laughs> known, I've never known anybody who was a dopehead who was an interesting person. And, um, you, got, you got a nod in agreement And there, I think Andrew. that that should be uh, emphasised to young people who are trying to be charming and passing spliffs around and are saying really silly things and then laughing, because that's what happens when you go to it's such a It's not big and it's not clever. Mm. But, I mean, the, the, the crucial thing is to get hold of people who are in a bad way as a result of taking drugs. And many of us, she was very wise, the Baroness, when she said that um, there was scaremongering talking about smoking the odd bit of weed is going to damage you for life. It isn't in most cases, we all know that. But it might make you extremely boring for life. But um, the, the, the people one wants to address are the people who are really damaged, either by this or by alcohol. But the point and, you and, raised, and yeah. as they do in Scandinavia, not say you're a criminal and you're going to go to prison where you can get even more of this stuff, but to try to help people with decent therapy and proper treatment. I mean, but the people point you never raised, go to prison. Sorry, I beg your pardon. No, go ahead. People would never go to prison for a very small amount. They just no, wouldn't. They'd pay a fine. They do for dangerous drugs. I beg your pardon. They do for smoking or, or taking dangerous drugs. Well, dangerous drugs. And talking then a holy, they go and find even game. more dangerous drugs given to them by even more dangerous but, but people. But the, po the point you raise about it, it being a gateway drug, and there are a lot of people who are worried about that, even though the, sort of the, the, the evidence is a little bit contradictory at the moment. It is contradictory, but, but yes. It is, I know, but, but there are a lot of people who say if you start on that, you know, where does it end? Well, I think what, one of the things that's been said about gateway drugs, yes, uh, which was well, once said to me by a therapist, um, who was actually treating somebody for cigarette addiction, is that it isn't gateway drugs, it's gateway personalities. If you're an addictive personality... Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, ...then yeah. you are going to okay. take whatever you take, whether it's cream Listen. buns or cigarettes, to a dangerous yeah. degree. But that I, I mean, I think, I think one of the big things about this is, uh, is criminalisation for me is looking at it the wrong way, because, uh, y you know, legal drugs can be abused. So, so that, that's my whole point. It is about, it's about attitude and it's about information. Mm. So, um, so obviously if you do have an addictive personality, you are going to abuse and you can do with alcohol and cigarettes. So for me, there's no point in criminalising. I don't actually the understand medicine. the point of putting somebody who's addicted to something in prison. I mean, what is the point? Well, it, there is no point, is there? Well, it depends on the addiction. It depends what they've done to get there. Most people fund but their drugs by theft. Let, just let Alison answer theft. Now, if you've got theft and burglary, and goodness knows, of course they've got to go into prison. Uh, but why, why are they, they not? stealing? Drugs why are they stealing? Why, why are, why to are fund they the habit, because these things cost money. They're if you stealing, haven't got the money, what are you going to do? They're stealing because it's illegal. If they had to mm. get the stuff by going to a regulated source... They're stealing, source, but not because it's illegal, but because they want it. It's far more expensive, it because it's far more expensive it. from a drug baron than it would be from okay. a government-regulated source. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you for that. Do keep your thoughts coming in.